Welcome back to Learning Solidity. Now in this tutorial I plan to cover bytes as well as extending string functionality. Now I did mention that I would do tutorials on both of these topics but I felt they actually work together quite well so I thought I'd do one tutorial to cover both. Now without expanding on this too much I'm going to jump straight in. Now what we have covered in the past is the usage of libraries and that's actually where I'm going to start because I'm going to extend the functionality of string which is some basic um, functionality using a library and this is going to heavily involve the usage of bytes. So let's get into this shall we. So I'm first going to create a new solidity file and we're going to call this uh, strings and then simply uh, pragma solidity and then type. 4.0 and we're going to create a library called strings. Now in our library we're only going to have two basic functions. Now I'm not going to cover the full range of functions you'd expect say for instance in Java, C, PHP, uh, JavaScript etc. I'm just going to simply do concat and string pos. Now hopefully with this tutorial once you go when basically you've grasped the basics of those two you should be able to sort of create the rest of the string functionality yourself. Now there are libraries that do do this but I feel like understanding how they work is quite important. Now first things first we're going to create a function and this function is going to be called concat. Now this function is going to take in two parameters. The first is going to be the base string, so we're going to call it underscore base. And the second function is going to be the value that we're going to be appending to our first string. Now we also need to ensure that this returns a, a string as well, but we also need to ensure that this is internal. Pardon me, and I'll cover that in a bit more detail as we go. So we need to make this an internal function which returns a string. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is convert these two values to bytes, essentially. When you have a string, uh, in some uh, programming language, I believe PHP is one of them, uh, you can actually reference the individual value of a sort of a string array because, like as mentioned previously, when you when it all boils down, uh, all boils down, sorry, it, it essentially is just an array of integers, which is then cast to their ASCII character types or the character values. So what we're going to do is create two bytes and the first is going to be bytes underscore base. Now this is actually going to throw an error and I'm going to let the error ru uh, run because I want to obviously highlight um, how to fix the error as well. So base equals bytes underscore base. Uh, first things first, I've actually got two variables with the same name. Be uh, let's call that base bytes instead. Now this is throwing the error of type base memory is not explicitly converted to expected type byte storage pointer. Now the reason for that is we've not specified the storage type of bytes. It, I believe is assuming the storage type of stack. So we need to specify that as memory and that resolves that issue. Now there is a third storage type because you actually have three. You have storage, memory and stack. Basically, your stack is just anything within a function um, that is obviously destroyed once the function is finished executing or whatever sort of stack encapsulation you have. You then have memory, which is relative to the execution of that transaction on the contract. In this case, it's obviously your very short term memory, which acts very similar to the stack. And then finally, storage, which storage is primarily used for passing a value which you don't want to be cloned. Now, when you pass one value into a function, it actually clones the value and doesn't um, it doesn't change the original value. So, for instance, in C, you would use a pointer to do this because you would actually want to point to the mem block of memory that you want to change. Uh, instead, it passes in a new value, and then when you manipulate that, it doesn't modify the pre-existing value. But I I think I'll cover that in something a little bit later on. Now. We have the first variable set as base bytes. We also need another variable, bytes memory again, underscore base, uh, let's call this sorry, value bytes equals bytes and then val underscore value. Now, the reason we're doing this is we're simply casting the value of the string to a bytes equivalent. This is applicable because the two store data in almost identical ways, it's just an array of integers. Now, what we need to do now is create a new. Um, 
storage or a, a new variable to store our concatenated data into. Now to do this we can't unfortunately create new bytes of an equivalent length. What we have to do first is create a string again in memory. I'm going to call this temp value equals new string and this is going to be the length of those two bytes. So simply base bytes dot length plus uh, value bytes dot length. I done wrong there. I spelled length wrong. There we go. Now all we're going to do simply now is like the first two set strings we had, we're going to convert that again to bytes. And again in memory, and we're going to call this new value equal bytes underscore temp value. Okay, and there we have our new array, or our new array of integers, which should be the length of the two original strings. Now, to simply concatenate them, all we have to do is iterate over each of the values. Now, this is the different, one of the key differences between a string and a byte. For instance, in a byte, like, for instance, new value, we can say whatever the value of the first character is. But obviously, we can't do that with a string, otherwise it'll throw an error. So what we simply do now is iterate over our first base bytes and then value bytes and then basically just affix one onto the end of the other. We do this by first creating two unsigned ints and we'll call that i and unsigned int j. Now the j is going to be the iterator over the new value and i is going to be the iterator over each of the individual um, arrays of strings that we already have. So let's do a quick for loop for i equals zero. i is less than underscore base bytes dot length, and we're going to increment i on every iteration. Now all we're simply going to state now is new value j, and increment the value on every iteration of that. But after we first specified the value, and then we're going to assign it underscore base bytes i. And then we're going to do the exact same for i equals zero. i is less than value bytes dot length i plus plus, and then underscore new value j plus, plus equals value bytes i. Okay, and that's all we need to do. Now all we need to simply do at that point then is return. Um, the new value but we can simply return it because we'll return the string as a casted value as new value and that will then return the object as string. Now I'm going to create a little um, simple test contract to test this. So I'm just going to create a contract called test strings. And now in there I'm going to have a function called test concat where I'm going to pass in a base value called also base and then I'm going to say it returns a string as well. Now we need to ensure that our library is applied to all the pre-existing string objects. So again, as previously demoed, using strings for string. So we're basically going to apply all the functionality of this library to the data type string. Now we can simply just at that point then return base dot concat and then suffix. Well, I'm going to call underscore suffix. And there we have it. Now, as previously mentioned when covering libraries and imports, the first value, because it's extended for the string object, is going to be the object that you're actually extending the functionality of. So in this case, it's base. So the base automatically gets passed in. It doesn't have to be named base. I just call it that for consistency. And the value that's passed into concat is actually going to be the second value. So if I now create test strings, and then pass in test, it should return me test underscore suffix. And there we have it. So that is a very simple way of doing a string concatenation. Now the next thing I'm going to show you how to do is let's call let's do string pos. So function string pos, because that's a very common function in our strings as well. Base and then string underscore value internal again gonna return this time uint 
Okay, so we need to return the value of the unit. Now, actually, I'm thinking about a string parse. Traditionally, in string parse, you actually return a negative value if it is a sorry, if it is basically a non-matching value. So I'm going to stick with that. Now, for our string parse, all we need to simply do is very similar to before. Let's convert the two values to bytes. Now I've already got that up here, so I'm going to just copy and paste that. Now, all we need to do is, I'm going to actually put an assertion here in this one. Um, I probably could have put some up here as well. Uh, I'm going to assert that underscore value bytes is equal to one. Actually, that's correct, is dot length is equal to one because we're actually searching for the string position of an individual's uh, value. Now obviously you could expand this on multiple values, but then it would just get a little bit more complicated. But so I'm going to keep this quite simple for now. Now, moving on from that, all then we simply have to do is for int, uh, actually I'm going to say uint i equals zero, uh, equals zero, i, uh, I'll try and keep the consistency actually, our spacing i is less than the base bytes dot length and then simply i plus plus okay and all we're going to do now is basically have a very simple return statement so if the again that's probably me not having that consistency uh, and i've not done it in all my videos but oh well if the base bytes i is equal to the value bytes zero because we're only matching an individual character. We're going to return i. Now that's going to moan because it's not actually an unsigned integer. I mean, because that's an unsigned integer and we're returning an int. But we can cast it, so that's not to worry. And then if we basically reach the end of our for loop, we're going to return negative one. And that is a simple way of doing a string parse. So for instance, function, and this time it's going to be needle in haystack. We can actually spell it right. So we're going to string, we're going to have the base, and then string value. And that returns an int. Now all we're going to do is return base dot string pause and that is going to be I'm actually going to take this functionality away from the user just in case they actually cause an error <laughs> so string pause let's call T so for instance if I now create test string and we're going to see needle in haystack long actually it needs to be in quotes very long value but we should find a t now if we do that it's now at found t at position 18 so if we just do a very quick count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16, 17, 18 19 now it is actually 18 because uh, traditionally in string pause zero is the very first position so we're starting to count from zero which would actually make 19 down to 18 so that now works now that in a nutshell is a very simple implementation of that what i will do is just to make things a little bit cleaner create a new solidity file let's just chuck in the uh, pragma solidity uh, hat 0.4.0 chuck our contract in call it test strings and also import uh, browser strings.sol and then rename that to that. Yes, I do want to name, rename it. So that is how we basically extend the functionality of strings with some basic string functionality, and also uh, use the bytes to do so, or use bytes to do so, should I say. I'm gonna call it there for this tutorial. I'm on the fence whether my next tutorial is actually gonna be on the creation of tokens. Um, I don't know if I'm jumping into tokens a bit too soon. 
I very well might go ahead and do that, but for now, if you found this tutorial uh, useful, please give it a like. Um, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them in the comment box down below. And if you subscribe, I would be much appreciated. But for now, I will catch you next time.